acting. Now, today marks 50 years since CFAX appeared on our screens, the world's first teletext service. Now, does this look familiar? CFAX was developed by BBC broadcast engineers in the late 1960s who found spare lines in TV pictures that could be used to transmit words and numbers. There was everything you needed, the news, the sports results, the weather forecast and the TV listings with just a few clicks of a remote control. Now, with all of this on offer, CFAX quickly became a national sensation. By the 1990s, 22 million people were using the platform weekly, making it the most read news source in the UK. But of course, then the internet and smartphones took over and the service came to an end in October 2012. So 50 years on from its first appearance, Tim Moffat has been looking back at the history of CFAX. CFAX, a name manufactured from Seeing Facts. It was mind-blowing. Text on your telly. You don't even have to wait for the next news bulletin before you find out what the news is. Because it's like a book or a giant encyclopedia with hundreds of pages and you can dial any of those pages as you go. The scene's now set for the thousands of viewers with CFAX sets, perhaps over breakfast, to read the latest news at the time they want to. Oh, hey, what's that about South Wales on there? Long before the internet, CFAX was at the cutting edge of technology. Wait, this will be changing all the time. That's the financial... Right. The, the if, index the, if the index changes, it can be updated more or less instantly. OK. The Centre for Computing History in Cambridge, where Teletext fans and pioneers have been celebrating its anniversary. anniversary Cutting the cake, Ian Morton-Smith. Early morning, when the first CFAX newsman, Chief Sub-Editor Ian Morton-Smith, arrives for duty. I was there at the beginning, watched it grow. I think there were four sets when CFAX first started that were equipped to receive the signal. Um, and by the time I left, there were 22 million viewers. You controlled access to the information. That's what made CFAX special. And then, of course, along came the internet and killed it stone dead. CFAX's financial section. For those using CFAX for the first time, the big question. Graham, how does CFAX work? Well, it's an ingenious way of using the television signal to get pages of information onto the TV screen. The normal television picture is made up of a number of lines, but there are spare lines at the top, and we use these lines to carry CFAX. A program system of an entirely new kind. Teletext took off. And it's all done at the touch of a button. After CFAX came Oracle on ITV, and later Fortel on Channel 4. It's fascinating insight into the past. Jason Robertson has archived thousands of Teletext pages. 1981, Sunday the 12th of April, 5 to 1, this is, these are the pages that you would have seen. Old television programmes recorded on videotape also contain teletext information from the time. People have been very generous and sent me loads of videotapes. I've got a garage full to go through. They need someone to decode that information yeah. and that's where you come in. That's where I come in. Why do this? Why archive all these old pages? I mean, we've got newspaper archives. There's loads, loads of those. Why not a teletext archive as well? Because um, the good thing about teletext, of course, it's, is it's impartial. Newspaper archives can be quite partisan, but CFAX has to just tell the facts. Heavy set and blocky fonts and vibrant, violent hues imparting TV listings, the weather, sport and news. The 50th anniversary has inspired this tribute from poet James Domestic. With super chunky graphics and clunky animations, everybody knows the joy was in its limitations. It's a very nostalgic thing. I mean, I remember growing up in the 80s and 90s and you'd see it and it really does, you know, it sort of almost didn't notice it had gone at first and then suddenly you do and then it's just not there. This town's too small for both of us. CFAX, you must be shelved. CFAX knew the web had won and skulked off in 2012. But when it began, CFAX seemed to be paving the way to a digital future. Chess, bridge, crossword puzzles and many other games appeared to lend themselves to the format of the television screen. And looking even further ahead, there's the really exciting possibility of using a domestic television receiver as a home computer terminal. 
far-fetched? Well, hardly. After all, it's not so very long ago I discovered that by doing this, I get that. The good ship Seafax, pioneering, popular, but swept aside by the tides of technology. Tim Muffet, BBC News. It's very nostalgic. I don't remember it flashing. You do. That was really fancy. Am I right in thinking that at one stage in your career you actually wrote a bit of Seafax? Yeah, and you had to get exactly the right number of characters to fit across for the headlines, and it was a nightmare trying to choose words or drop letters. A bit like a crossword. But strangely satisfying yes. when you got them to work. Yeah. Yeah. Your Seafax memories this morning, we'd love to share them. Get in touch on that newfangled WhatsApp thing <laughs> that's uh, on your screen now. Very modern. Now let's.